Today I was watching a wonderful new video by YouTube creator Alec Watson, who runs the channel Technology Connections. He covers a wide range of different technologies from week to week on his channel, and today's episode was about black and white photography, how you do it, how that arcane stuff works, what you need to learn to be able to do it, what kind of equipment you need. Well, black and white photography and developing it myself was a big hobby of mine back in high school, almost 50 years ago, and this brought back memories almost as if it was yesterday. But it actually triggered me to make this video because of something I've been thinking the last week or two. I had been thinking that single lens reflex photography and black and white development back in the 70s or 80s had about the same level of complexity and learning and special expertise that it takes to do even decent or basic YouTube videos today with some cameras and lighting and editing. It's not rocket science, but you actually have to learn quite a few things to be able to do it and have some certain level of equipment or software. In this video, I'll explain what I'm thinking about and you can see if it makes sense to you as well. So back in high school, I had a single lens reflex camera. I built a dark room in the basement underneath the basement steps, literally in what was basically a closet. And this is the kind of stuff I was doing. I did photography with flowers. Uh, this is a, a rotunda at a building at Iowa State University where I took a journalism and photography class. This is my brother, probably about 10 years old. I would have been about 15. Here's another one of him, a little more artsy with the dog we had at the time. Here's my high school Iowa farm project with a new litter of pigs one winter, captured with my single lens reflex camera. And I was the high school photographer in our tiny little town. Here's the boys high school basketball game. Here's the girls who won the state championship in Des Moines. That was a big day. Here's some trick photography, a double exposure of my father suspended over our farm buildings on, on the farm. And by the time I got to college, I didn't have access to a dark room anymore, but I still had my camera now with color film and just having it develop the normal way. Here's a self-portrait I took, probably uh, late in college or maybe during med school. But let's think what it took to do all this. I had my single lens reflex camera. I had to learn something about lenses. I had to understand f-stops and shutter speeds. There were all the different kinds of film. I learned developing and the tanks and reels. Got an enlarger, learned how to do that. Every month read a couple photography magazines. I had books on photography, plus constantly trying to teach myself and month by month do a little bit better. All of this is exactly the kind of complexity and diversity and different things you have to learn, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, to do video today. Today, there are tens of thousands of people running pretty good, pretty high quality YouTube video channels. Of course, some of them are practically professional and some people learn they can make a living off having their own YouTube channel if they get about 500,000 or a million uh, viewers per month. But what does it take to do that? Even though those videos may look fairly straightforward, they're probably using a lot of equipment, teleprompters, spending quite a bit of time video editing. They've invested in microphones, lighting, all kinds of things. Let's take a look. Fairly early on, I got a better camera, a Logitech camera that was about $100. But after a few more months, I graduated to something more sophisticated, a Sony camera. I started working with a lapel mic or other microphones. I got kind of fancy Elgato lighting. Uh, after a few more months, I learned to use a grease screen. Uh, by then I was using a video processing system called OBS Studio. A few months later, I learned how to use a teleprompter. Then, only about two months from, from now, about two months ago in September, I started using actual editing software. I used a program called Filmora. That let me put YouTube videos together, but I could also play with stuff like make two versions of myself and Bruce on the left interacts with Bruce on the right. And who knows what the next horizon is gonna be. So that's my idea. Today, hundreds of thousands of people are really pretty good at making YouTube videos, but they've learned a lot of different things, cameras, lighting, audio, editing software, in order to make that work and make it look simple and good. Just like decades ago, Hundreds of thousands of people learned how to use single lens reflex cameras and develop the film themselves and make pretty darn good pictures, whether they were amateurs or professionals, they could do things they were proud of and had fun with. 
So I think there's a lot in common between photography as we knew it in the 70s and video as we know it in the 2010s and 2020s. Thanks for watching.